Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. It's now time for an update on sports stories from across the globe. Aaron Akerijola and Ebi Iomon are joining us from the beautiful city of Uyo in Akwaibom State. How are you guys doing? How is Uyo today? Um, fantastic. I'm say Clement Wilder here today. We are the Gospel Akwaibom International Stadium. Ebi, good morning to you. Good morning. By the way, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get straight into the thick of the action. On the penultimate day before the game between Nigeria and Libya, the Super Eagles against the Mediterranean Knights, all is set. The pitch is being walked upon right now. You can actually hear some background noises as they're trying to clean up the stadium and prepare the stadium for that particular encounter, Nigeria versus Libya tomorrow evening. And I must say that the Libyans, the Mediterranean Knights, were here yesterday to train. And yes, they seem to be complaining about different things. And people have accused them of deflection tactics, so to speak, claiming that they are not fully prepared for this game. Their players are not in town. Their best legs are not available for this particular fixture. AB, what do you make of this? Um, um, first of all, this game is a game that Nigeria ought to win, Aaron. If Nigeria um, replicates the performance they've had in the last two matches, but yeah. like we already know in Africa and in football at the moment, there's no team that is a write-off. But the, the stage is set for the game. All the players are around, everything is going on. So I do not see any reason for complaint. But probably this should, should just, could just be a diversion on their own end to ensure that Let's say they have a big loss. It's not going to look as if they were <laughs> oh, not. And at the same time, maybe the Super Eagles will just feel, mm, it's an easy it's game. Complacent. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so. the players yesterday, when we spoke to them, they said they have no ounce of complacency in them because they want to remain top of the table, especially as um, so many already have eyes on them due to the World Cup. They want to just be good in the AFCON qualifiers. All right, in the AFCON qualifier, one man that will be missing from the action tomorrow is our talisman, our star striker, Victor Simon, he posted a video yesterday uh, stating that he will be back for not the Super Eagles, but for Galatasaray under 19 against Ataya Spore, which is good news, but not so good news for us here because a lot of people will, this stadium will be packed to the rafters and everyone will be going to get a glimpse of Victor Simon. That will not be happening tomorrow, but we are happy that he is safe. We are happy that he's all right and recuperating according to schedule. Yeah, um, um, I hear as to rest, October 19th is his return date. But what is important to note is that Nigeria as a country has a lot of star power. Yes, Osime is the um, Af African best player of the year, the reigning African best player of the year. But there's a Victor Boniface who could take the opportunity to get a goal here in this stadium. So many Nigerians have been waiting for Victor Boniface to step up and he could just do that tomorrow night. And let us not also forget the likes of Taiwa Wuni, who is still waiting for regular play in Nottingham. So this could be the catalyst for his coach to start picking him. But we'll look at other um, aspects of sports. We have Daniel Amokachi, who was a for, uh, former assistant coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria and said as a point as the Super Eagles coach, he has been unveiled as the coach of Lobby Star. That happened yesterday at the government house. And um, he'll be hoping to take the reins there and leave Lobby Star to a better finish than what they had last, uh, last um, season. But it's important to note that so many ex um, big stars true, are true. coming back to the NPL. Okay. We saw um, the likes of Ladamboso, who was the coach of the Flying Eagles, get back. We also saw Fini the judge return to the NPL. So I think with those kind of. Um, I'm not forgetting Emmanuel Amunike. Exactly. With those with kind of life. big names, um, probably more um, attention will be drawn. Let's not forget Ahmed Musa, who also returned, and Sheikh Abdullahi. And still um, on sport to have Anthony Joshua. The fight between rather Quara United, Aaron, a, a mishap happened on March the 5th. We saw um, Sahid or Laini have a um, concussion. But what is important to note is that the medical team rushed to his rescue and were able to resuscitate him. But he wanted to return to field of play. But the medical officer said, no, he can't do that because under normal condition, any player who suffers concussion during a game is also be put under uh, medical supervision. And that's what just happened. So there was a lot of controversy on that game as Remo Stars coach Ugumo Dede came out to say that they did not handle it well. But Quarry United have come out to refute it and praise their own medical crew. And we also have Anthony Joshua and the Dubois fight under threat. Majorly because um, the IDF has said that there needs to be an initial fight 
a fact that is compulsory because Joshua and Dubois did not initially sign um, a rematch clause and that will take a lot of time now because he needs, that Dubois needs to fight two mandatory fights before um, he goes against Joshua. So this will put the December date under a major threat. Era. I'm looking at that and I say that, of course, Joshua, no, Joshua did sign a rematch because Bob mm -hmm. Dubois didn't. He, yeah, he didn't And sign. that has actually put that in jeopardy. Anthony Joshua is going to be paying for that particular loss, that devastating loss to Dubois for a very, very long time. His stock has taken a huge dip and it's unfortunate this is happening to him. And if he doesn't get any major marquee fight, I don't, I, I worry for his legacy as a man because he's not getting younger. Yeah. Yes, he's in his 30s, he's in his mid 30s right now. It's unfortunate all that is happening. But in the meantime, let's actually just um, talk about some very sad news coming in. First of all is the fact that um, uh, one man, Baldock, um, passed away and it's unfortunate this happened. The Panathinaikos, England born, Greece international, passed away yesterday in his home. And medics came and found him drowned in his own swimming pool. They tried to resuscitate him, but unfortunately they could not. It's unfortunate that this has actually happened. It has thrown the footballing world in mourning. But here in Nigeria, let's talk about the fact that kudos must be given to the mathematical world, Chief Chegun Odebami, for blowing the whistle and sounded the alarm that Peter Fregene, the golden, um, the Green Eagles goalie, who was there for three decades in the 60s, 70s, and 80s as a shortstopper for the Green Eagles, is on life support as we speak. The truth is this, um, there are talks that he is in Sapele right now in a medical center on oxygen, on life support, and it's not looking good. They are thinking of transferring him to Ugeli to get med better medical treatment because he's been there for four days and he's not been able to get, he's not getting better and he's not responding to treatment. And Shegun Odegbami has been calling on Nigerians and saying that what, every, something must be done and this man should not be allowed to pass away like that. As we speak, we know that the Ministry of Sports has reached out to Tina, the wife, and also the Delta Ministry of Sports has reached out to the wife and they've, they've told her that they will get back to her. If that's good enough, I do not know. But at the moment, we are still holding our breath, hoping that the man who is a fighter pulls through. I mean, please, we all need to reach out to, you know, our national heroes, like people like Frangeni and other people. And that's why we keep asking, is there a fund by the NFF to be able to settle matters like this? Please, we need to look into this deeply. Uh, I just hope he makes it through, you know, because this is a very sad one. But I'm not also happy. There's a story making the round about a certain footballer called Government Peking, which some other players are complaining about preferential treatment. They say he's in Division 3 in England, Division 2, I mean with Crawley Town FC. Uh, please, if you have discordant tunes in a team that can make other footballers be having side talk, and calling somebody government picking and they say he has very big influence. That's why he's being called to the national team. I think we should watch these things, Aaron. And please, I would like you to do investigation on this government picking. We don't have a place for this in our football because you won't be able to get the best. Aaron. Um, Rafai, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's standing, huh? Yeah, it's standing. Uh, uh, standing okay, you uh, I would like to say something. Um, yeah. These are speculations as well. Like we already know, he is in Division 3 and may not be playing actively. But we saw him play earlier this year instead of Chris Econ, and he did not have a bad game. Oh, so he, had a he had a fantastic game. He had his first game for Nigeria. Yes, he did. And let's not forget that the player who won the Aston Golden Boots was in the third division in Spain, Emilio Lopez. He was the one who did that. Under normal conditions, they would not have given him an opportunity. But if a coach believes in you and feel, feel you have something to offer, the only problem Nigerians will have is if Tanimu doesn't get play time when he's being invi invited for two games so they could see what he has to offer. Because if you are brought under conditions that are questionable, people will love to see you prove yourself. And if he can prove himself, despite the club he is, I don't think, I don't know why he should not be in the team. Um, uh, Vincent Ayama was Nigeria's first choice goalkeeper while he was at Ayimba. 
So okay. I think he could justify his stay. Fine. If but his con Rufus' concerns are yeah, but, valid, but, but, valid but, but, very see, valid. See, because see, right see, now see, we see. have more than enough players see, that see. are striking and hitting very see. hard at the highest level. Maybe there were many players. Yeah. The likes of Leo Balogun and all of that. When you talked about Vincent Yama being Nigerian, but I was at Eba. Yeah. Eba was at the top flight that time, which our local league was yeah. on song. Yeah. But for me, my fear is this talk within the circle of the players to an extent that they've now tagged the government became. I think it's something we should watch. That's what I'm saying. Are there other players who have not been called to nationality that are like competitive right. position? Yes, that I will play, have more playing times in Europe than him. So, I mean, let's, let's look at this matter critically. And if you give me the all clear, I'm happy about it. I don't just want any rancor in the team. That's all. All right. Uh, of course, you know, all eyes are on uh, the Super Eagles. Uh, Libya definitely coming in as the underdog. I haven't done well so far uh, with the AFCON qualifiers. So, you know, looking forward to a, a great match. And, the, you know, this, this game does belong to Super Eagles. So uh, hope, hopefully they'll deliver with a great scoreline. To Daniel Amokachi, just want to celebrate him because uh, Daniel the Bull and I worked together for Kwese Sports. We did a little bit of sports reporting together uh, at that time and what struck me about him is how passionate he is about just coming back to Africa and making his contribution to to uh, to football and to sport in general on the African continent so you know great to see him uh, you know lending his expertise uh, locally and just looking forward to seeing more of his influence uh, on the African continent of course he's had uh, one or two stints uh, internationally uh, but uh, you know let's let's see how he goes so uh, just congratulations to the ball. Very quickly, the Super Eagles. You are in a stadium there, the Apabio Stadium, and Ibrahim Gusso, when he was in Makati yesterday to inspect the renovation of the Upper Iraqu Stadium, was lamenting that there is only one grade A stadium in Nigeria for serious matches, and that's where you are now. So the challenge is how can Nigeria upgrade, renovate other you know, uh, uh, playing venues to make sure we don't just have only what uh, God's will have probably left behind as its legacy in uh, Uyo. Now, as for the Super Eagles, well, there have been controversies about um, Iguavon's selection of his team, the 23-man squad. You say there's a full house now. The people have complained that, look, some of the players he chose are players who are not playing in their, in their clubs. They are players who are, you know, uh, 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 dealing with injuries and all of that. And he doesn't have, you know, quite a complete team. But in any case, uh, what Nigerians expect. Uh, AB was saying some of them will stay on the bench. They may not even play. But what Nigerians expect is that tomorrow, October 11, that Nigeria will beat Libya. That uh, on October 15, when the return leg comes, that Nigeria will beat Libya. And Libya will not be able to boast that because uh, Usime and Ulisa are not there, uh, they can uh, beat uh, Nigeria. And then very quickly, uh, Andre Aniesta, the Spanish Barcelona mid Mestro midfielder, has thrown in the tour. He says he's retiring at 40. He's 40, father of six children. He has won almost everything that could be won. His combination with Xavi Hernandez will be remembered for all times as a, you know, an example of great creativity uh, in, the mid, uh, in the midfield. And we congratulate him on his retirement as he moves on to other challenges. He scored uh, Spain's winning goal in 2010 World Cup. He won 32 trophies in total, including nine uh, La Liga uh, titles and four Champions League uh, titles. That's that about Andres uh, Aniesta. And then Peter Fregene. It's unfortunate that our players, you know, there's no insurance for them. Uh, our sportsmen generally, there's nothing to protect them when they retire. Uh, we should thank uh, Chief uh, Odegbami calling for support and help for Peter Fregene, who was known as the flying kite during the time he uh, was goalkeeper for ECN, stationary stairs, stores and the Green Eagles. He's 77, by the way, but with that, uh, Chief Odegbani, we should all pray for him. Thank you very much indeed.